Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to the seventh video in our Sharpening Masterclass series. I have, in the previous six videos, gone through the various different techniques that we have at our disposal using sharpening stones, for example, and there's various different types of them, or using uh, bench grinders, or belt linishes, or water stone sharpening systems, or the scary sharp system, which actually scares me. Uh, can you tell which one I don't like particularly much? Um, what I'm going to do now, from this video, I'm going to be going through, instead of the techniques, I'm going to be looking at every technique that you can use to sharpen a particular type of tool. And I could have started with chisels, I could have started with plain blades or knives. The question I get most, and the tool that most people are predominantly scared of sharpening, uh, and this is actually held true for myself as well for many years, is the scraper. And this, scrapers are absolutely amazing. It, it is one of the most awesome, easy to use tools that gives you, if done properly, if sharpened properly, it gives you the best result you can imagine. They are so useful. And the best thing about them, with one good scraper, you can almost entirely do away with the need for sandpaper. And sandpaper is the bane of my existence. It's good quality sandpaper is incredibly expensive. One scraper is five, six pounds, if you get a good one. Um, and this lasts forever. I have still got scrapers. <laughs> In fact, I wasn't going to show you this. Um, this is my, my just part of my scraper collection. Uh, I have drawers full of these, and this is, this is my fault. I, I seem to be a bit of a, a hoarder. Um, but we'll make them in, in custom little shapes for doing particular tasks, uh, building violins or, or acoustics or, or whatever we have to be working on. Um, but I've got scrapers that I made for a particular task 10 years ago that I still have, and they come in handy every now and then for a little job. Uh, whereas, you know, if I had a piece of sandpaper floating around from 10 years ago, I would uh, have to be classed as a hoarder, and I don't want that. Uh, okay, now, the sharpening of a scraper is actually incredibly simple, and it should not be scary in the slightest. There are, uh, you will need a stone of some sort, you will need a file of some sort, and if you're only using rectangular scrapers, cabinet scrapers, there is a jig, or there are several jigs, this is the Veritas variable burnisher, um, that come, can come in handy. And, uh, you know, I mean, this is actually pretty amazing. There are also various different levels of sharpness, and I'm sure you're completely aware of that when you're sharpening a plane blade or something like that. You've got sharp and you've got sharp. Um, now, if you are, for example, removing paint from the top of a guitar or, or varnish from a table or something like that, the size of the burr and the quality of the burr that you are after does not have to be the same as if you are fine finishing wood ready for finish, for example. And, uh, Actually, I'm going to give you a close-up, and I'm going to do some drawing. Now, this is the edge of a standard scraper, and it's just sitting like that. Uh, we're going to go into some geometry now. Basically, on a normal plane blade or something like that, you will uh, create a 45-degree or a 25-degree or a 30-degree bevel and in order to get that sharp, you've got two surfaces that are perfectly polished and flat, and they meet at a point without a radius. Okay? And that gives you a sharp cutting edge that cuts through the material. And we want to make something similar to that with our scraper. Now, the first thing you need to do 
and the first stage is that you want this edge to be perfectly square, so 90 degrees, to the sides. And it's the same, um, it's the same idea. The more polished the surfaces are, and I'm talking about both surfaces, the better a finish you're going to get. Now, if you're scraping paint, you can just go straight off a, a bastard cut or a, a milling file, um, and that will give you a, a suitable finish for uh, rough work. But if you are talking about fine finishing, you want to polish and polish and polish and get it a really shiny surface, and that means that the burr you turn will be sharper. Now essentially, if you've got, I'm not even sure how to, how to draw this, if you've got an edge that is slightly pitted microscopically, when you turn the burr over, that pitting will be in the edge of the burr. So you're going to end up with a microscopically serrated edge, and that will not cut as well as something that's highly polished, for example on that side, which would be perfectly flat and and even sharper. So it's the same principle as, as, as sharpening a chisel or a plane blade. Now, however you do it, and we're going to go through various methods in a minute, you want that edge to be made perfectly square to the, uh, to the longer sides. And then, again, however you do it, you're going to turn a burr over. And what you're doing is using pressure, using a burnisher of some sort, you're turning a hook off the edge. And if you're prepared, and if your edges are sharp enough and shiny enough, that hook then turns into that edge and will cut very, very well. And uh, it then becomes a question of degrees. Here is a scraper that I have. It's fresh out the box. It's brand new. It's never been, never been used. Um, the scrapers that we sell at Crimson Guitars actually are much harder than normal. They're, they're very hard, and they come milled with the edges already square, which really, uh, it means that straight out of the box you can actually use them, really. However, I'm going to pretend that this is blunt and not worth using. So the first thing we want to do is get that edge perfectly square. You can use a file, and this is, a, this is actually a diamond file, which is quite useful. Um, now, the problem is we're human. Our bodies want to move at an angle. If, you are, if you're desperate, if this is the only thing you've got, it's perfectly fine. You can file your edge away like so, and you will get a serviceable result. There are also jigs. For example, this here is very useful. It is a, um, this is a bastard cut, single cut file, um, which actually gives quite a nice cut. But it's in this jig by Veritas. And uh, this is a, uh, I'm not even sure what they call it. The file goes in there. and. It holds up against the edge of your scraper. And that is holding everything at a good 90 degrees and allowing me to flatten the, flatten the edge perfectly. Okay, now if you don't have this jig, there is another option. And the other option is a very, very simple uh, shooting board. And what you do is just basically two bits of ply with an edge that is perfectly square and cut nicely. And uh, I use our leveling files for this a lot. It's um, predominantly we make them obviously for leveling a uh, guitar's frets, but they're nice and square and it gives you the same result. And, And doing that is much easier than holding a, a normal file. Um, there's an inherent stability there that seems to disappear when you've got something in a handle. 
So even when we're even when I'm doing it in in a vice, well, let's do the other side because we haven't yet. Even when I'm doing this in a vice, I feel much safer making a square edge like this. So. Uh, so anyway, now most people won't have access to a leveling file, but uh, you know, it, is, uh, it is useful. Now with a good quality scraper made out of properly hard material, just the act of doing that, of using a file, and uh, it has to be a relatively smooth file, will allow you to, uh, to cut and uh, you know it's not actually making dust this is making shavings now I can feel that it's not staying sharp for very long and it's not taking particularly large shavings but if you're not after a perfect finish it's almost making dust if you're not after a perfect finish if you're just roughing something down that is perfectly serviceable and I will often have this uh, to hand while I'm working and just touch up the edge of the scraper and then go back to work. Okay. And it's, it's making shavings, but not, it's not the pinnacle. This is the first starting point, but it is usable nonetheless. Okay. Anyhow. Once you've done that, then it is preferable to polish the edges and you want to use a stone of some sort for that. Okay, if all you have is water stones or, well, oil stones work as well, the last thing you want to do is use your, the flat face you use to uh, sharpen chisels with. Always use the edge. Uh, but bear in mind, you're going to have to straighten it and square it. My initial problem with sharpening scrapers was, when I was taught, my stone was flat. I don't think, or at least I don't recall, anybody saying that you have to flatten your stone and keep it flat. Um, I was young and, and dumb, really. What I prefer using is a, a diamond stone. And, uh, yeah, there are various uh, lubricating media. Um, Suggested I'm actually using camellia oil at the moment because it uh, it protects everything and uh, doesn't rust. Um, it also isn't particularly offensive. Anyway, what I'm doing now is just polishing the edge, and this is just along the edge, making that even prettier and a little bit more perfect. Now, once you've done this on a new scraper, you, it doesn't take very long to get back to perfect. And you can actually sharpen a scraper and then resharpen and resharpen several times before having to go back to this stage uh, because it's already polished. Now, you can trust yourself and just polish that like that. Um, to be honest, that's what I tend to do. However, as with, every, as with everything, there is a trick that can be learned. And the trick is to find something that is perfectly square and use that as a guide. Now, this is a little vice that I love, and uh, it just happens to be impervious to the oil I use and wonderfully square. Now, even though I'm using a diamond stone, I don't like keeping it um, just in one spot. So I tend to move it sideways. And this is polishing that edge as well. And we mustn't forget we want to sharpen the other side. Now, just to, remem to remind me what side I'm working on. Let's put those there. Now, 
the beautiful thing about scrapers is that you actually, even on a rectangular one, well, even on a rectangular one, on a rectangular one, you have eight sides that can all be sharpened and given an edge with which to uh, devastate your wood. No oh, cracky, that actually came out wrong. Now the whole part, point of scrapers is the burnisher. No, the whole point of having a scraper is to use it to scrape things. But the burnishers help. Now this is a, a round one that has yet to be polished. Um, personally, I prefer triangular burnishers. And this is made out of an old triangular file. Now, what it has to be is harder than the steel of your scraper and highly polished and uh, with no catches or burrs or edges. Because if you've got something that's not quite shiny and polished on here, it will transfer over to your scraper and you will not end up with something perfectly perfect. And perfect is what we're after. Now, work hardening. Work hardening is the fun bit. I'm going to put this. I'm going to put this in the vise. Okay, so scraper goes in the vise. Now this is something that most people don't do, but actually works really well. And at the ninety degrees. I'm burnishing the edge. Okay. Now, the act of pushing down and burnishing is work hardening the metal. What it means is my scraper starts out at, uh, I don't know, 67 Rockwell or something like that. Did I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Um, and through the act of working it, it makes it harder. And what I'm doing here is work hardening the edge. I'm not turning a burr, I'm just flattening down these surfaces. What it's gonna do, in effect, will actually pull a little bit of a burr. So, let me find some paper and a pen very quickly. What it's doing is pulling that bit out like that. Just a little bit. Okay. And now what we need to do, and this is the hand method. You either have it in a vise like this and well, it depends on what you're after. Okay, that there will now cut. There you go. Now, did you see I started at that angle and then I slowly pulled it back and I found the point that it was cutting. Because I've got zero burr, basically, there's a very little angle. But I'm taking proper shavings. And at zero, we can use this for very fine work. I'm not pushing very hard, I'm just gently taking small shavings away. And the finish that I'm getting here is nigh on perfect. And yes, I'm using this uh, tutorial as a, a chance to clean my poor bench, because yeah, she's dirty. Okay. Anyway, so that's without a burr. Now what you want to do is turn that burr over and you can either do it like this over the edge of the bench which is how I was taught like so and and this is where it gets interesting I'm turning a slight burr over and with very, very little work, 
I'm taking shavings. And, and that there is a, is a sharp scraper. Now, if I was to go at a much higher angle, or a much more acute angle, actually, <clears throat> say 15 degrees, that would make a very large burr at a large angle for taking away a uh, very coarse paint or something like that. Now, the other method, one that I've now moved to myself, actually, is at this stage to put the scraper in a vise. So that's 90 degrees. We're going to go slightly off. And this feels like I've got more control. And I have actually got a better burr on that side than I did on the other, doing it that way. So we have full, full shavings coming off now, and a good finish and it actually feels really sharp. Okay. Now, when it comes time to resharpen, you can use this for five or 10 minutes and then flatten it off. And whatever method you choose, turn a burr again. and she's sharp again. And that will happen two or three times until you have to square the edge off. Okay, now that's how to do it by hand with a burnisher. Either a round burnisher or a triangular one, as long as it is perfectly polished and really hard, and harder than the steel of your scraper, it will work well, and it's an easy thing. All it takes is a little bit of practice. Um, it really, I don't understand why people are so scared of scrapers, really. Okay, this is a, again a brand new scraper, it's one of the ones that we're selling um, at Crimson Guitars. And, whoops, I'm dropping things. What I'm going to do is use, I'm just going to sharpen that edge using the fantastic um, Veritas variable burnisher. Now this thing is pretty cool and uh, it's a fairly new toy to me, I, I, I like most things that Veritas do. Um, essentially, it has a steel bar in there that is much, it's hardened steel, basically, and it is harder than our scrapers. And using that dial, you can change the angle of your steel bar. Now, it's exactly the same process. That bit there fits onto the edge of the uh, scraper. And all I'm doing is holding it. I'm actually having to push sideways and I'm burnishing the edge flat as long as I don't have it too low in the vise. This is the one issue I've got with this. If you've got small scrapers, it doesn't quite work. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, now what this is doing is the first half of what I was doing by hand. It's burnishing that flat face down at zero degrees. And then you just decide, okay, I want five degrees, set that there, and uh, go at it. And then the same thing again, loosen that off. Five degrees the other way. Now there are other burnishes, none of them are variable, um, where, in fact, you can make yourself, make one yourself very easily, where you've just got something that holds it in place and a lovely, um, hard bit of steel in it at the right angle and you're away.
Now once again, there we go. Perfect shavings, cleaning my bench up, and we're all good. Now, the next scary thing is kidney scrapers or, or curved scrapers, because, you know, you do need custom shapes fairly regularly, uh, especially when you're building guitars. Now, you go through the exact same processes. Make sure that the edges are nice and flat, using uh, whatever tool you happen to fancy, and do the same thing the sides, which is the side and which is the edge. Anyway, as much as possible, keep everything nice and square. And that really is the kicker here. What I always struggled with was that I was missing this point. I wasn't getting it perfectly square. I was using the oil stone that I was taught, and my oil stone was flawed. So the edges were rounded over, and I could never get a proper burr. As long as you work carefully on getting these edges nice and flat and square, you will have no problem turning a burr over. Okay, so let's just assume that I've done all of that and then hold the burnisher, we go through the exact same process again. The burnisher is flat and I'm just work hardening that edge. Um, you can work hard on that edge. Now you'll notice I didn't polish this. Um, in this case, I'm just going to do something very, uh, very coarse and, and quick. If I'd wanted a perfect finish, I would polish and go through up to about a thousand uh, grit, maybe on the diamond stone, something like that. Um, so let's go in. This is the difficult bit. work hard on that edge and then it's just a simple case of turning the burnisher around in there at the angle you want and uh, <laughs> my biggest problem is holding it down actually to be honest so that now Going against the grain. Oh, come on. Yeah, my bench, my poor bench. But anyway, I'm getting a really, really nice burr on that, and it took a matter of seconds. These things are not scary. Um, the. Here again, this is one of my. This is my little one. And the biggest problem I've got is holding it down. So you burnish the edge flatten it and at about five degrees so just slightly off you hold that down and away you go well I hope that this has demystified the process for you somewhat there are as with anything to do with woodworking or guitar building a myriad different ways in which one can do this sort of a process. For example, you saw me flattening the sides of the scraper on, the, on a, a stone. And I'm going away, flattening the side, flattening the side. Another option, scrapers are very bendy and flexible. Another option is to put the scraper down and use a small bit of broken stone or a water stone or something like that and use that on the top. Uh, which means that uh, the scraper is nice on a flat surface and the stone is doing the work. Um, so there are many different ways of doing it. However, the rules are the same. You want nice square edges and that is the start. Even if the finished surface is straight off your file, if you've got a square edge, your scraper will scrape. Um, if you want a fine finish, or a super fine finish, that is just a function of how much time you spend polishing or flattening um, and getting the steel perfectly shiny. Uh, we could, I've heard people play around with uh, um, green honing compound and leather and stuff, and I just think that's a, a bit overkill on scrapers. But, um, 
That is the thing. So square edges and burnishing the edge at some angle. Uh, zero to five degrees is for fine work. Five degrees to ten degrees is for you know roughing out, and you go to fifteen degree. A fifteen degree burr will eat through paint and uh, just strip away your wood. Now there are various different burnishes on the market, and frankly, mine I just made myself out of. Uh, I used a linisher. Sawy Pro Edge. I used Linisher and uh, a good quality triangular file, and it worked perfectly fine. Now, honestly, scrapers are amazing. They are one of the most useful tools that I have at, in my arsenal, and I have a rather large collection of tools. Um, it is so worth getting over your hang ups and learning how to sharpen them and just practicing. It will take you five or ten minutes of experimentation to figure out the method that works for you and the level that you want. All you need to remember is that those edges have to be square. And if you use the different methods that I showed you today to get that starting point, turning the burr is really, really easy, even on curved scrapers. And the last thing I will leave you with is I've got some scrapers that were cheap and nasty, and I really struggle to turn a burr on them. If, after 10 or 15 minutes of experimentation, you still can't get your scraper working properly, it might actually be the tool, not the tool user. <laughs> um, blame the tool. So if you get yourself a good quality scraper, made out of good quality metal, uh, and then have a go again, you might find that that was actually what was holding you back. And I have, I've had several scrapers that just would not work, and that put me off using them for years, and I seriously regret not using them for those uh, in that period. Uh, for nothing else, it would have saved me a load of money uh, spent on sandpaper. Um, thank you very, very much for watching. This has been a Sharpening Masterclass. I will be looking at plain blades, chisels, scrapers, gouges, inside gouges, knives, and, uh, and probably not saws, <laughs> because I'm not an expert in, oh, I'm not an expert in any of this. Um, I'm not confident that I can teach you anything about saw sharpening, so I'm not going to try. Uh, but with uh, the rest of the stuff, there will be more videos coming on uh, down the line, so thank you very much for watching. If this has been useful, please click that like button, click subscribe, and share with all your friends. It really, it really helps, and uh, well, it helps keep uh, keep the videos coming. So thank you very much for your support. Have an awesome day. Go and sharpen a scraper or three. Goodbye.